we don't need to sign that. No, I'm waiting. Yeah, this, this I'm the waiting for that to come back to this. Oh, really? That's okay. My I just bad. don't want to get them confused. You got B. Yeah, this B needs to be signed. Okay. This is. Okay. You've already got them put together. That's the first one. This yeah, is the first one. Okay. Here's the second one. Yeah. That's uh, we just did that one. No, we closed the. Yeah. Yep. So this the one yeah. you're signing now is the. All of us. The third one, one request yeah. for determination of applicability, 13 South Branch Road, Michael Elizabeth Antos proposed placement of a single camper RV within the riverfront area. Once again, uh, I don't think we have any discussion. I'll look for a motion to close this hearing. So moved. And we moved. Second. Second. By Steve. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 all four board members. Okay. Once again, I'm going to negative two and negative six on the determination in the same special conditions. But the fourth one, we question determination of applicability, 13 South Branch Road, Keith Chagrin, okay. Chagrin and Christine Gagnon, proposed placement of a single camp RV within the riverfront area. Once again, I will look for a motion to close the hearing. I don't think we have any further discussion. Uh, so moved we'll so we'll by Edwin, seconded by Steve, Steve seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Once again, negative two and six determination with the same special conditions. We just did uh, this one, right? Let's see. Sure. 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 Gwen and Christine yep. Gagnon. No, uh, this we you just, yeah, we just did. Sure, but that's right here in my hands. Okay. That's coming your way. Okay. I just have to we can take a pause. Yeah. We're halfway through. Yep. No, I know. You got to do it. You're doing very good. Okay. So you talked to Scott today. He's going to do it remotely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I actually, I, after thinking about it, mm -hmm. even even it. So, Scott, can Yeah. He's on now, actually. Oh. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. We don't, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and open up the fifth one. Request for determination of applicability, 13 South Branch Road. My, yeah, Michael. Yeah. Michael. And Laura. Dancer off. Dancer off. Thank you. I'll just <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, I'm French. I'm not. <laughs> Proposes placement of two campus RVs within the riverfront area. Once again, I'll look for a motion to close the hearing. We'll move. Second. Edwin Steve. Any further discussion? Very none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Once again, I'll propose uh, order negatives two and six with the same special conditions. Mm -hmm. Look for a motion to accept those. So moved by Steve, second by Edwin. Edwin. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. The sixth one. Request a determination of applicability 13 South Branch Road. Greg, Arlene, and Greg Mungin. 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 Okay. Proposed placement of a single camp RV within the riverfront area. Once again, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So move. And we move. Second. Okay. Steve. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Once again, we will be going with a negative two and six determination with special conditions. Look for a motion to accept that. So move. And we okay. Steve. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Unanimous. Yes. 
Okay. And this is um that's what we just did. Excellent request for the donation of Brookability, Center, yeah, 13 South Ranch Road, Anne Marie Maggio. Maggio, yeah. Maggio proposes placement of a single camper RV within the riverfront area. I'll look for a motion to close that hearing. So move. Edwin, second. Okay. Steve, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We got four. Aye. Aye, aye. Unanimous. Yeah. No opposed. Once again, I'm going to propose a negative two and six determination with special conditions. We have any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, I'll look for a motion to accept. So move. Edwin. Second. Steve. For the discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 all four? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's easy. Wait. Smiling. <laughs> We can be, you know, keeps it, keep going. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Which one is this? That's the second slide. Yes. Okay. No, this is number six. That one was dead to roll. This yeah, one here is, uh, right, yeah. Okay, and the last one we have is request for determination of applicability 13 South Branch Road. William Chagrin proposes placement of two campers RVs within the riverfront area. Look for a motion to close that hearing. So move. Second. 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 Steve. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Unanimous. Once again, I'll propose a negative two and six determination with special conditions. Any further discussion? Okay, I look for a motion. So move. Edwin. Second. Steve. No further discussion, as I said. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, it passes. We knock those all out. Okay, that's last one to sign. We'll take a little break here to get caught up in paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> 99 <laughs> Yeah. Fine. All right. Okay. Oh, sorry. I think it doesn't matter here. No, I'm just. Okay. So that is all the permits. <coughs> William. Um, I will. So I'll and scan them sure. all. I'll make sure that the special conditions that they agree to um, are in that. And then the originals will get mailed. Um, would you like them to your individual home addresses or? You can send them all to Mary. Okay. How's that? All right. To make it easy. And then I'll, we'll just get, because we'll have a meeting here pretty soon and we'll just take care of everything okay. amongst us. Okay. Sounds good. I want to go ahead. I want to thank everybody for all the time that we've, Put into this it wasn't easy because yeah. Shao actually talked to the EP, should be doing those intent. Yeah. Well, just, he thought we could handle it all with this when we talked to Mark Stenson. Well, I appreciate it. We yeah. appreciate it. It's, it was difficult for us. I, I appreciate know. your patience as well. So. Yeah. It's been a long haul. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, I hope everybody had good holidays. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of your year. Plans. Plans, and I'll just wait for that. We'll last, the last, one. last one come back before we open the next year. Yeah. Yeah. This last one. Okay. Okay. Good. Ready. All right.
Mine. Next on the agenda, notice of intent 13 Russell Street to redevelop in DEP file number 170-288. This has been continued from a previous meeting. Berkshire Design Group on behalf of Triangle Properties LLC is proposing to redevelop the currently vacant lot at 13 Russell Street, formerly a gas station to a coffee shop. The lot is 12,197 square feet and the resources areas present on the site are restricted to AE flood zone, 100 year flood. <coughs> site visit was conducted by Shiloh on 727 with Doug Sorrell. And who here is tonight to work with us on this one? Uh, Doug Sorrell, Berkshire Design Group. Uh, we get the volume up at all. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. <clears throat> oh, there is a little echo. Um, so, uh, may I share my screen? I can't hear him, Morty. Can you hear me? Somewhat. Yeah, we're just working on getting the audio more clear. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Trevor, please. Are you able to are you able to hear me okay now? Yes, that's better. Yes, better. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. So uh, I've taken the liberty, I hope that's all right, of sharing my screen. Are you able to see a site plan? Yep. Yep. All right. Um, so uh, yes, I'm here on behalf of Berkshire Design Group, and Berkshire Design Group is on, uh, here on behalf of Triangle Properties LLC uh, for the uh, parcel at 13 uh, Russell Road. Uh, we are here, uh, Russell Street, pardon me, um, and we have presented this project to the Zoning Board of Appeals that has uh, approved a uh, variance uh, because the parcel uh, had a series of uh, non-conformities uh, due to setbacks, due to the very small size of the parcel. Uh, the parcel uh, project was also presented to the planning board, which was approved last week uh, for a special permit uh, uh, for this uh, use on the site. And um, so now we are here as a continuation. Uh, we are presenting this project to the Conservation Commission because the uh, parcel is entirely within the floodplain, uh, the flood elevation for this area according to FEMA, is at the uh, elevation of 125 feet, uh, and the uh, parcel is entirely below that. Uh, the site plan that is currently on the screen is the site plan that was submitted in the original application. So I just wanted to uh, show this to uh, refresh your memory. Um, uh, we have not submitted the revised plans that were approved by the planning board, but I'm more than happy to uh, do that um, so that uh, you can have them for your records, but I wanted to present them tonight. So uh, currently the first slide is just showing you the existing proposed plan that had a uh, curb cut off of uh, Russell Street and a curb cut off of Bay Road. Um, and uh, the next uh, uh, image that uh, I am scrolling to is within that same original plan, uh, th there were a series of rain gardens that were proposed within this uh, proposed site plan in order to uh, capture stormwater runoff and improve uh, the um, flood storage of the parcel. The planning board had requested a slight reorientation of the parcel to essentially remove curb cuts off of Russell Street to prevent any kind of traffic backup issues. And so the current image on the screen um, is uh, the, the site plan that was reconfigured to have a uh, one-way entrance off of Bay Road and a one-way exit from the site onto Bay Road, and then uh, access to uh, the existing uh, parking spaces that were there, same number of parking spaces uh, for visitors, same number of parking spaces for employees, uh, same size of drive-through, same size of building that was all presented. Everything square footage wise um, is the same on the site. The main difference is that they have, uh, we're proposing to close uh, the, uh, 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 kind of uh, westernmost curb cut on Russell Street and then the eastern existing condition curb cut is going to be 
uh, kept for fire and emergency use only, but is is blocked and it's going to have grass pavers on it. So we'll um, I'm going to scroll to an image of what that. Uh, pardon me. Uh, this is the same site plan, but just with an image in the top right corner of concrete grass pavers, so that uh, it will it will have it will appear to have vegetation on it, but it is possible to uh, safely drive a vehicle over it for only for emergency purposes, not for the public to access the site. Um, I think the big issue for uh, us tonight uh, with uh, for you guys to discuss the compensatory storage, I wanted to show you that the site was uh, is currently proposed uh, to, the the rain gardens are slightly uh, reconfigured uh, for this new uh, one way uh, in and one way out drive lane. Um, and uh, although it's been reconfigured, it is still providing a net uh, benefit of flood storage. And uh, wanted to briefly uh, present that. This is a table, we have not yet submitted it uh, to the commission, but obviously would be more than uh, happy to do so for your uh, records. Um, and if you can follow my mouse to the right here, there are two columns in bold that are um, kind of the, the net volume for each elevation and then kind of a cumulative impact. And overall it is a uh, at each uh, elevation contour we're uh, in we're grading the site so that uh, proposing to grade the site so that uh, each elevation is getting an increase in flood storage with a net overall a net uh, 3,000 plus cubic feet worth of, of flood storage to the site so overall we're trying to trying to uh, make uh, an improvement to this parcel uh, uh, specifically for flood storage um, so that's the I'll stop there, and I wanted to open it back up to you guys uh, for questions. Is the snow storage going to be? Uh, great on question. Uh, so snow storage can be in uh, these uh, rain garden areas, and then also off uh, the uh, curb to the west, and then also off of the uh, curb uh, to the east, just south of the building. Do it for a lot, Edward, because they're not wetlands. Excuse me? It's not wetlands. They can put snow in those areas. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, I would just. If yeah, they're, if they're wetland areas, there. they couldn't put the snow into them. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's already the surf site. They're going to use existing. I don't think it's a problem. Uh, okay. So and They'll uh, be creating their own problem if they fill up the rain garden and they don't have any place for drainage. Yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah, you're not to take it off site. There's not a lot of area there to plow either. No, I know, but so it's a lot to deal with. Yeah. And what are you <coughs> going to do for uh, the grass pavers on the on the curb cut on Russell Street for emergency vehicles? Well, what are you going to do to stop cars from going out there? Or uh, they, that is a good uh question trying to click over to that sure the planning page. board asked you that question right so that's your yeah. jurisdiction uh yes i uh would imagine that they did i uh my colleague jeff squire was at that hearing and i was not so um uh i don't have a specific uh response as to uh how that's being uh blocked other than yeah, signage Pardon? How big is that area where the grass pavers are? 22 feet wide. 22 yes. feet by, by uh, how much? Uh, that dimension is not shown on, on the plan. It's a oh, little it's bit, uh, maybe it's about six feet on one end and, and closer to 10 feet uh, on the east side. Okay. Okay. We don't have any jurisdiction over that. Okay, yeah. That, that's a planning board thing. Yeah. Right. Well, I know. And Doug, could you just remind me, did you address the DEP comments at the previous hearing? Or we did discuss we did discuss the DEP comments at the original hearing, yes, at the first hearing. Right. And you did just provide clarification of the um, compensatory storage, uh, so that takes care of that. So there's no there's no net fill increase, so it's, it's positive. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing on the site really is the floodplain issue, correct? Right. That's correct. That's the only resource area. So I don't see why we cannot 
perceives would possibly close this hearing. Unless you have the board members have some other questions that pertain to CONCOM. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we had a point about the entrance, but we just don't have any jurisdiction. Right, 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 right. Right. It's a curiosity thing, but I'm right. sure the planning board was more concerned about it than yeah. we can be. Yeah. So, uh, any further discussion? I'll ask for a motion to close the hearing. Make a motion to close the hearing. Ray makes motion. Seconded by. Second. Steve. Good. Any further discussion by board members? All those no. in favor? Aye. 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 Three. Yeah. yeah. Aye. All four. Close. Three. The close. The hearing. And I don't know if we have any other special conditions. You I think drafted. Of that? Um, Did you draft something yeah, for I have a draft of some kind of like boiler plate type things. Um, so just <coughs> so I have uh, special conditions yeah. relevant to the proposed development of 13 Russell Street, the former gas station into a drive through coffee shop. Uh, the property currently has a 500 square foot building, uh, pump awning, and paved area. These features are proposed to be removed and the pavement reduced. Um, I'm not sure if any of these findings are out of date, uh, but I'll just go ahead and read what I wrote. Uh, the entire um, nearly 13,000 square foot parcel is within the 100 year floodplain zone AE per the latest FEMA maps. No other resource areas are present. There are currently no stormwater controls on site. Uh, proposed work includes drainage, rain gardens, and comp compensatory storage area. Um, is that correct that there are no stormwater controls or am I incorrect in that? Uh, there uh, are no, like, uh, there's no sub drainage on the site. There is only a uh, direction to have uh, rain gardens as BMPs. Right. Which, which currently on the site, there's absolutely nothing. There's nothing there. There's yeah. nothing there. So, so this is definitely right. an improvement yeah. in the rain garden. It's not going up to Route 9. So do you want me to read those? Please. Okay. So the general conditions applicable from the project approval um, would be no equipment or construction materials uh, stored, stockpiled, buried, dispersed, or parked within buffer zones and resource areas, uh, no maintenance of construction equipment in jurisdictional resource areas, and they shall be properly contained to prevent contamination. Um, not sure if that's really relevant in the floodplain. Mm, well, but we can throw it in there. Okay. Yeah, these are boilerplate. Um, this document shall be included in uh, all contracts, plans, and specifications dealing with the activity that is subject of this order and that are created or modified after the issuance of this order, along with a statement that this order shall supersede any conflicting contractual agreements, plans, or specifications. The term applicant, as used in this order of condition, shall refer to the owner, any successor in interest or successor in control of the property referenced in the notice of intent, supporting documents and this order of conditions. The commission shall be notified in writing within 30 days of all transfers of title of any portion of the property that may take place prior to a certificate of compliance. Uh, in addition to keeping a copy of this order on site for reference by all parties, the applicant shall provide a copy of this order directly to the person or persons supervising the activity and will be responsible for ensuring that all persons performing the permitted activity are fully aware of the terms and conditions of this order. Uh, should there be any discrepancy, contact the commission. So before the work to be uh, begins on site, uh, somebody shall be designated to be the monitor, um, excuse me, somebody should be designated to be responsible to monitor compliance with the order of conditions in their name and contact information shall be provided to the Conservation Commission. The agreed upon erosion control shall be, oh, there is an erosion control, oh, never mind, sorry. Uh, okay. uh, right, prior to commencement of any activity on site, a uh, pre-construction meeting shall be arranged between at least one representative and a member of the commission. Okay. And the Cons Conservation Commission shall receive minimum 24 hours notice prior to start of construction. Uh, okay. Um, erosion controls are not relevant. Uh, dewatering activities. No, no dewatering. Okay. Uh, okay. So then I have um, basically the, the next one is once the approved work has been completed, that the uh, following shall be submitted to request a certificate of compliance. So I have a breakdown of how to request a certificate of compliance. Uh, would you like me to read that process? I don't out? think we need to know. Okay. And conditions that will survive the order. Um, well, they're yeah, not in the 35 foot zone, so it's not that one. And uh, okay, at no time shall somebody be placed within jurisdictional zones, uh, but that's still. Okay. okay, I think okay. that's pretty much so, it. Uh, does the board agree with those? Does 
Yeah, yeah. those are the fair yeah. conditions. Yeah. Public for motion at those. Doug, do you have any questions? Uh, about the nope. Okay. Uh, Second. And we move. Second by Ray. Ray. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous all four board members. Yeah. And that's a redevelopment of an existing site, correct? Right. It's going to be an improvement on what's there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I hope the coffee's good. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, too. <laughs> All right, take care. That's out of your hands. <laughs> that is definitely out of our hands. All right. Okay. Good to see you, Doug. All right, thank you all. Okay, next up on the agenda is request for determination of applicability 87 Rocky Hill Road is continued from the last meeting. Jason Galvin seeks to establish a half acre chicken and asparagus farm on his property, 87 Rocky Hill Road. The site visit was conducted by Shyla Davis and Jason Galvin on 11-16. So Jason has requested a continuation as um, he's still working to get um, wetlands looked at by a professional um, because there were no uh, two scale plans submitted with a request and we need to know what he wants to do and what proximity to the resource area. I'll, I'll look for a motion to continue this to Tuesday, February 14th, so we'll move. Sick at 6.30 p.m. So moved by Edwin, second, second. second by Steve, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All unanimous to continue the 214. Next is a request for determination of applicability, notice of intent, yeah, hash, I mean, arrow two, notice of intent, 56 River Drive, now has a file number 170-291. Marjorie Southworth seeks to construct a new residence on the lot in 2015. File number 170-174 was approved with the order of conditions to do similar work, which is never conducted. The current proposed work exists on a smaller footprint and is further from the river. There's riverfront, floodplain, and national heritage danger species uh, protection present on the site. An RDA was filed and a hearing was held on 11-22 for that permit. After communicating with the DEP, a notice of intent has been recommended. A notice of intent has been filed with the EP, comments have been issued, and a message of determination received. So, so, have you folks signed in the intent sheet? Yeah. Um, can you Use the little side thing to click it. Like the silver thing on the side. Yeah. Uh, so, thank you. The determination. This is rule place? Yes. Yeah. If the determination of applicability request form um, these folks have filled out. We never officially issued a negative or a positive determination. I don't know if we want to do that because now we have an NOI open or just kind of make it know. I don't know what the process is on that. Well, we know it's going to require a notice of intent, so I will. Just for formality and paper. I will look for a motion to close the previous determination of applicability hearing on this project. We move. Second. 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 All in favor? All right. All right. So we're going to come back with a positive determination, correct, Sarah? So this yeah. is, we're going for notice of intent. Yeah, right. but this is going to close the request for determination. All right. Yeah, because they originally filed that since we weren't sure which one to go with. Um, right. And DEP recommended an NOI. Right. Um, Thank you. Just make sure we have all our paperwork ducks in a row. So I'm just going to go with a, a positive one. Mm -hmm. The area described in the reference plan is an area subject to protection of the act. Removing, filling, dredging, or altering of the area requires the following notice of intent. I look for motion for a positive one. So, okay. So, 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 Ray, Steve? Yes. Ray, then Ray Steve. Yes. Any further discussion? Hearing that, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we Aye. close out the determination. Can you sign? We also have previous orders and conditions open yes. that we have to close too. So I was not sure if we were able to close out the existing order of conditions or not uh, with the incomplete certificate of compliance. Um, those certificate of compliance requests was not on the agenda this month. Well, I don't know if it would be inappropriate to 
close those out because the work was never done. No one's going to complain. Yeah. <laughs> if we didn't have it on the agenda, we already had a request of determination issued after those previous notice of intent mm -hmm. and order conditions. That should have been done before the request was done. It yes. wasn't. Yes. So, but we don't have those forms here tonight to sign. We have the forms. So, uh, did you bring the request forms or not the, the request? The previous forms? notice of intent, yeah. order conditions. The, the eight eight. I mean, the previous file numbers. Yep. Yeah, Sorry, yes, because I sent those. I think. Yes, I sent them, um, and they're here as well, okay. along with the payment. Let's see if we can tackle that and get it out of the way. Okay. Okay. So we have. One seven one seven. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the order conditions for file number one seventy dash one seventy four. It was previously requested by Martin Rule on April eighteenth, two thousand six. It requested to be made by Marjorie Southworth to uh, get a certificate of compliance. And basically, it's just going to be a number five. The above reference order condition has elapsed and therefore no longer valid in the work regulated by it was never started. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much cut and dry. Yeah. Um, what's that? The address. Otherwise, is that the ship? Yeah, I have that six. There's, no, that's, that's who's requesting it. The project is 56. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. That's not the, the project site. Okay. That's fine. So. I have a motion to accept the uh, five with that order. So move. And we moved. Second. Seconded by Ray. Ray. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so do we have to sign anything on this or not? Um, that's the request form. I have the actual certificate one, of which I can fill out if you want to. Sign. Just give us a blank form. We'll just sign it. We'll put it with it. This okay. is, these are for us to take. Yes. Yeah, these are the requests. Okay. Um, okay. And then I do have them digitally as well. Let's just go ahead and sign these. Yeah. Go to, uh, and I am realizing you sent you you just did a notice of intent allocation digitally, right? Yes. Okay. We have we have a copy. This is the copy, right? Yeah. Oh, is this a blank? Um, we have a copy too if you need one as well as a copy of the comments. What, what okay, I have a copy of the DC comments, but um, I don't have a blank order of conditions form. Okay, but this, this is the determination of applicability. This yep, is for... that's a determination <laughs> for the RDA. Yes. All right, okay. All right. RDA. sign up. <laughs> so this is the RDA is signed, that one's closed. Um, we got to close this one. Over. So the request for certificate of compliance for this is. One of them. Two thirty-eight. <laughs> there's, there's two. There, there should not have been two open ones. There, there's one from two thousand six. There's one mm -hmm. from two thousand fifteen. Yeah, no, when in two thousand fifteen, they closed. Two thousand six. All right. So, it's been yeah, sixteen, add. seventeen years. <laughs> it's total. Doing the same thing. So, um, uh, it's it's still going to be this. We don't know exactly what was okay allowed then without going back right. details. Right. But in either case, the work was never. Done. Started her. So we're just closing out the file numbers. That's basically all we're okay. doing is getting these file numbers closed with the DEP. If the order conditions were filed with the registry of deeds, uh, that would come up in a land transfer. They're going to want to have a certificate of compliance to go with that file number to close the process. Mm -hmm. If they were never recorded with the registry of deeds, it's still a good idea. I think I get to have the COC in your hand mm -hmm. in case something ever comes up in the future. A lot of times, people in the past never. Recorded the order conditions with the registry of deeds. Those ones are recorded. Those are recorded. Those both. So you, you definitely need to record these. Okay, so let's put that one aside. This one is file number 170 238. Once again, applicant was Martin Rule, but this time it was April 15th of 2015, requested by Marjorie Southworth. Once again, we have a five work above reference order conditions has elapsed and is therefore no longer valid. And your work regulated by it was never started. So I'll look for a motion to grant the certificate of compliance based upon that. So moved. Edward moved, second by Steve. Any further discussion? 
No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, all four. This one's signed. All right, so and how we proceed with the notice of intent. Notice of intent. Okay. So we have the DEP comments and the uh, natural heritage response. Do you have a copy of the letter sent with this? So I'm going to I'm going to start with uh, no, the, I don't have a copy of that, but. the natural this natural heritage Asia species act. This one yes. here. Yep. So that's the response that they got. Uh, said that they will not adversely affect the natural. Uh, resource area habitat of state protected rare species. So, so we don't need to tackle that. We've got that. Yeah. Don't, need to, don't need to discuss that. Nope. Just proving okay. that they so are. So we have <laughs> comments from the DEP. Who would you like to address? Did you, who's going to address the comments from the DEP? In the file? I don't even know what they were. Not in yet. <laughs> you, <laughs> haven't, you haven't looked at this at all? No, we have, we've looked at it. Yeah. And I, um, I believe we've prepared some of the calculations. That will address the comments there related okay, to the so first the, one. Okay, so the first one is the, though, though work may be exempt from review under a domestic, it is not exempt from review under the wetlands regulations 310 CMR 10.59. The commission must wait to close a public hearing until NH ESP has issued its determination. Okay, so you've done that. We have. Right, so number one is all done. That's all done. There appears to be two other conditions on, on the registry of deeds site that have not been issued. Certificate of compliance is issued done prior to issuing any new order. Mm -hmm. File numbers 170, 174, 170, 238. That should submit form 8A to the commission for each file number, which we just did. Proposed house is larger than the existing home for the submitted plan. It's not a question, but okay. <laughs> it isn't. It's small, right? The DEP comments that the proposed house is larger than the existing home. Per the submitted plan, hmm. I didn't notice that one. Did you notice that one? It's small. Okay, so we'll just go past that one. Work appears to be proposed in boarding land subject to flooding with no area or volume calculations included in the NOI, which is required. B BLSF elevation appears to be near the 127 feet using the NGVD datum of 1929. The submitted plan appears to show elevation data but does not show. Does not state what datum is being used. If the NAVD datum of 1988 is used on the plan, then there is a conversion that must be applied. The current volume of the existing structure located in the BLSF must be known as is the volume of new work in the BLSF at one foot incremental elevations. At this time, insufficient information is included in NOI to show compliance with the performance standards for work in the BLSF. Flood insurance study is used in conjunction with the flood map to arrive at the correct floodplain elevation. But you've got to get some calculations. Yeah, so they sent these in this morning. Um, then here's a printout. Okay. Well, okay. So we have dear members of the board regarding 170-291. Additional information was requested to show compliance with the riverfront redevelopment performance standards, including volume measurements pertaining to the boarding land subject of flooding, and a narrative to address compliance and responses because we are sharing the cal below calculations to show that the volume is in fact less significant than the existing use. Theme of flood elevation is 126.8 on the parcel and the calculation below uses estimates and averages but should be accurate to address compliance. Existing shed to be removed is 610 square feet inside. It sits within the flood area. The average shed elevation is 125.5 or 1.3 below flood elevation. 610 times 1.3 is 903 cubic feet. The new proposed building is 1,332.6 square feet. The average elevation is 226.2 or 0.6 feet below flood elevation. This comes out to 800 cubic feet. It's actually a bit less than this. 800 cubic feet minus 903 cubic feet is 103 cubic feet. Negative. negative. So it's basically a, a negative net increase yeah. in compensatory storage. Yeah. We're not talking large volumes here. I'm willing to accept this as, as proof. Can you review the I did that. I mean, I tried to go through the um, surveyor and I never got any luck to have them do it. It's, so it's, I just went through averages. I mean, 
it certainly is not level. And I just took the, the worst case scenario, made it a volume, and it's those are the numbers. We're going, I mean, there's there's hardly anything there. So is it is the board fine with accepting this for the amount of volume yes. involved? Yeah. Thank you. Insufficient information has been submitted to show compliance with the re with the Riverfront Redevelopment Performance Standards 310 CMR 10.58, comma parenthesis 5. The proposed new structure is not in the same footprint as the existing one, and the proposed footprint is larger than the existing one as well. But that's contradictory. Not. No. No, we didn't notice that. Did not. No, I think what they did was they, mis the, they took the trailer. The trailer is smaller. But the the house that was approved was much larger than what we're putting in there. So that that could have been why they they're saying it's bigger. See, so, we approved the larger house before, yes. but how do we do that? You and you approved it with the shed. Now what they did was they took compensatory storage mm -hmm. to the north west side of the shed so they dug it out gave you compensatory storage got it to work okay when we look at it okay i didn't even include the trailer i just said we're getting rid of the shed yeah. this is what that volume is we're putting in the new house and just by using those two figures there's there's okay. a difference so since the New proposed house is bigger than the existing trailer. Yes, it's it, okay. Big, yes. That, do you still have to get a variance from the ZVA because it's a non conforming building lot because you're increasing the size of the footprint? That's a building inspector question, not ours. Yeah, that's going to go through. Uh, yes, that, there's a ZVA hearing that's going to be. Uh, yeah. so the only thing we're concerned with is compensatory storage. That's correct. And I'm assuming that the the ZBA, expansion of the footprint is going to be from the trailer to the road and not to, closer to the river, correct? That's correct. We're, we're actually bringing it forward. Yeah. And, okay. That's a positive. And it's already gone through once before and was approved. All the houses on the south side and north side are actually going to be even closer than the new proposed. It's called house. grandfather. Yeah. yeah, and it's grandfather. Yeah. But, so, I mean, it's, it's not really grandfather. What it's called is it's no more detrimental than what exists within the neighborhood. Yeah, but you have a, a grandfather footprint. That's that correct. Yeah. You didn't so have that to begin with. You're SOL. Not really. Not really. Through a finding, you can actually prove that what you're doing is no more detrimental than what exists within the neighborhood. Well, I'm just saying riverfront zone. If you didn't have that to begin with. You, well, you, yeah. You could, for you, you could, could, that'd be different. Yes. You know, same thing here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have the wetland protection act. But they reference if you want to go through that. No, or? I'm not going to go there. <laughs> okay. So board wants to. Yeah. No. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> certainly, if for whatever reason they don't get the the zoning variance or the, the finding, then there's it's a mute point. But they're going to get it. We ha we haven't had the hearing yet. That, that's not our. That's yeah. not our. But that's not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get bogged down with stuff I can't. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this hearing will never get it's done. No, you're just looking at compensatory stuff. Yeah. Right? Gravel driveway that is shown appears to be simply lawn or so that has been driven over. This is likely not degraded area. I find mm -hmm. that hard to. It's in some of the pictures that yeah. are brought yeah. the trees. That's helpful. Yeah, there's gravel on the driveway. Yeah, there is. Please, yeah, please take a look at Google. Yeah, they, they're telling us what to There's look at. Much, we can, right. if, if anything, I, I've seen it. If, if we know. give you a, a, a finding, it's up to them to appeal us. Bottom line. That's right. Okay. They're telling us what we should be looking at. We've seen the drive. It's, it's obviously been driven up. Mm -hmm. okay. What will be the commission? What will be the composition of the proposed driveway? If we can do an asphalt driver, we're going to do an asphalt driver. Is that it? That's technically it's outside of the floodplain because that driveway is a little bit up higher. No, but it's, it's where the. Um, yeah. When 
127.27. And we're at 120, the floodplain is 126.8. Yeah, yeah okay. it's essentially right at flood stage. Yeah, yeah. No, no information was included about what vegetation will be proposed where the existing dwelling and shed are located. I think what you're talking about is when the shed is removed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Is that the trees? The shed where, where the, because okay. you're moving the building yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, what is going to go on that in terms of vegetation? Grass. Okay. You'll be a planting. Yeah. yeah. A narrative showing compliance with the riverfront redevelopment standards need to be created and provided to the commission. Total riverfront on the parcel must be known, as well as the existing degraded area on the parcel. This information is needed to exist in Calgary and require restoration and or mitigation. I think the, the previous, um, the, two, the 2016 order condition said that there was 8,000 square feet of degraded area. Yeah, they, they provided that when they did their notice of intent. Yeah. But you're not providing that to us now. But wouldn't it be the same? We haven't done anything to the property. But it's not in the filing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They can't, you can't, we can't reference an old filing. Even though you already determined that that's. No, that, that's not in the application. Yeah. That's, that has not been submitted. The DEP doesn't hasn't seen that. Okay. If you follow, maybe that was in the previous notice of intent, yeah. but they don't know that because they you did not include that in your filing. Mm -hmm. So I think they have a point there. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just a number can't... that needs to be put on the yeah. application. Yeah. Question number six. Number six. Yeah. Is that something we can just go into the portal and update? And look mm -hmm. into that? Yeah, something is going to update the original filing or there's some sort yeah, of. Yeah, if you run into issues, you can always call Mark. And, um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to um, continue. That's what the board's going to have to determine. For any riverfront redevelopment project, there must always be an improvement over existing conditions per 310 CMR 10.58, parenthesis 5, parenthesis A. A reduction in impervious area, removal of trash and debris, additional vegetative plantings may be considered improvements. The square footage of work in the riverfront area needs to be added to the notice of intent. Is thirteen hundred square feet the the property and the driveway? No, thirteen hundred square feet was just a house. So. House. Um, I think these number six and number seven have to be addressed to the DEP. Okay. I don't think we can the driveways are both up. Yeah, but the top of the riverfront yeah. area. Yeah. Okay. So the narrative and the square footage of the riverfront area are yeah. the two we have to have to address outstanding items. Six and seven. The narrative of what specifically? Uh, of the work to be done within riverfront area. Okay. okay. See. Um, you are increasing the footprint of the prior camper. Yeah, You're doing more work in a 100 foot riverfront zone. Mm -hmm. They're asking for some mitigation, some planting, mm -hmm. some replication. I had to go through the same thing when I built the Smith Boathouse. Mm -hmm. I had work within a 100 and 200 foot riverfront zone. I couldn't touch the 100 foot zone because I'm in the 100, I, everything had to fall in 100 to 200. As a result, even though it was a lawn area, Already previously disturbed floodplain, the building was being extended six feet or whatever. I had to do uh, mitigation. And the mitigation was eliminating 420 linear feet of Japanese snotweed along the Hadley Dyke okay. on North Lane. I had a two year plan because I couldn't, they, they were looking for something. So you're going to have to. Probably work with the you know they're gonna you're gonna need to do something to replace the additional area that you're creating for the house. They're looking for they're looking for some mitigation. Okay. Not that you can't. How do how do we like interact with DEP again? Because I thought DEP just gave you guys comments and let me work with you. You can contact them directly here. It's right on the, the form, Mark Stimson. The phone number. He's gonna he's gonna tell me he's gonna tell us to like take care of knotweed on the dike or something. No, well, you know that's that's okay. something you have to yeah you gotta deal with. So that. I, I had to go find something for mitigation. It took me a while to find something with my engineers that would meet what they wanted for mitigation. It couldn't be Japanese knotweed. It had to be in a riverfront 
on the, on the flood, you know, had to, had to be like property. So, so when it comes to floodplain, it's things that are at the same elevation, I'm pretty sure, when you're working with compensatory. Oh, you're not talking about compensatory storage. No, though. no, no. you're just talking about the, the, this has nothing so to do with compensatory just, storage. They just want to have a written out explanation of how are you complying with the riverfront redevelopment standards, which are in the Wetlands Protection Act. I think I might have sent you a screenshot and of that. This is, okay. this is of the, the these two things, six and seven, we can't tell you how to do that. You have to. We bring you ideas and then you tell us if that's sufficient. You know, to present it to the DEP, right? Like they told they're me, the decision makers. Yeah, they're the decision. Makers. Okay. They can they can if we were to issue an order on this, they could easily appeal us over because we didn't address these. Okay. So um so in the previous one, and I recognize that we didn't include this information, but I think the the finding that you guys made for that one was that there was previously like 8,000 square feet of disturbed area and that the new house was going to have like 4,500. But I don't feet. know that. You I know what I'm telling you. You, that. you didn't present that in the notice yeah. of intent to us. But so if that, you like that, record that, is that like, so that was part of like the order of conditions last time. Is is that like improving the area to make to like- I can't than, answer that question. You have to have somebody like an environmental person that does these. But in terms of like fixing the area up, if you if there's like less area of disturbed area on the site, is that something that- that the board can consider for like approving the plan. The you project. have to present this to the DEP. Okay. I don't know. We, we, we don't know more. what to tell you. We don't know what to tell you. Uh, you know, the fact it was in a previous one, we don't, they don't know that. Yeah, no, I was just we don't know. Example. I don't know that either because it's not in the current filing. Yeah. I was just giving an example like you did with the knot week. Like yeah, I yeah. think the previous like thing that you took into consideration was that it went from 8,000 to 4,000. So I was, I was just thinking if that was like going to be, if we could, Establish that we were going to have less disturbed. So, for example, area. if the building is if the building is slightly larger, we may still be disturbing less. Well, we're going to get rid of like the driveway that goes. But that needs to be in the filing. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yes. yes. That, that, they don't. Documents. See, they they don't know that. Yeah. And I don't even know that until it was brought up here from the previous filing. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to continue this. That's okay. Okay. Um. And I'm working tomorrow all day. So if we want to touch base over the phone or email, or okay. if you even want to come in my office and call Mark together or something, just so that we're all in the same loop. Yeah, um, we can we can just start by contacting him and okay. seeing what the next steps are for like just those points. Is it um, helpful to look at the trees? That was one additional piece of follow-up from our first conversation. Yeah, they've identified the trees. Or we could come back and do them. that since we'll be coming back again. Yeah, so I just wait to come back and yeah, the trees are marked if you guys want to go. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not so much. I mean, if we are taking them, you know, that could be part of the redevelopment. Of, you know, you're going to replace those trees with something else. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, so, some of them are going to be occupied by a deck. So you're not going to replace the, the, that tree or whatever. You know, you, some of them are going to be removed forever. But within the confines of the property, we could replace yeah. that just yeah, another completion. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. That's so, the idea is showing that we're taking almost. More than fifty percent of the driveway out. Mm -hmm. and that's gonna, well, that's that's what you need. To, yeah. Yeah. You so need to document it. Show, we don't right? have yeah. proof of it. We, we don't, don't have a document. They don't know that either, so they're gonna kick it. So it's good to start with them because whatever they're comfortable with, relative to not only the plan but how we show it, is something that then you guys would be comfortable yeah. with. Um, it's kind of their guidance. So he asked that question in the things about the previously about like the existing disturbed area, like. <laughs> Is is that number that you guys reached in the last one? Is that can we start from that number? If you, would you have to present? It? Yeah. Okay. We don't. But is that is that like an accurate number to use if that's what the board already found? The, the one that was in the notice of intent. No, the one that was in the other order of conditions. I don't know. I, I have I have I haven't seen. Have 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 Ask them too, yeah. just to make sure. Yeah. Because with flood fund stuff, um, it can get confusing. What's the is the degraded part? It's like the. Mm -hmm. If the board already found that there was 8,000 square feet of degraded area, he's asking a question about the degraded area. Like, oh. Can we tell him that the board already found that in the previous order of conditions? Well, that was okay, that so was you, already presented in a previous presentation by whoever made the application, but we don't have it in this application. I was going to say, I, if, I if, it were to be, if it were to be added as part of your narrative to say, you know, in the permit from 2015, it was found that such and such amount of degraded area was there, um, they may accept that that's something I'm not sure, but they also might say that because it's, you know, been seven years or eight mm -hmm. years almost that maybe it's not up to date. 
but I'm sure that you could present that as part of your narrative to say, okay, this amount was already approved. And just see what their feedback is, how comfortable they are. Yeah. And okay. do you have a copy of that? Or, okay, wanna make sure. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, look for a motion to continue steering for February 14th. Yes. Second on the agenda for 6.30. Yes. Yes. Move. Second by second. Yes. Steve, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, all four. Oh, okay. So, okay. Thank okay. you so much. Is this our copy? Put the, the, the file? Yes. Calculation? I haven't. <laughs> okay. So, I'll prefer to do that. Yeah. it all together. Next up is request for determination of applicability Kestrel Mount Warner Trail Extension. Kestrel Land Trust seeks to expand and improve access to an existing trail currently accessible from River Drive. The proposed work includes creation of a new one quarter mile foot path loop to a viewpoint, installation of a small kiosk, and placing a bench at the viewpoint. Site visit was conducted by Shiloh Davis and Stu Watson on 11 15. And who is here to present for this tonight? Hi there, this is Stu Watson of the Kester Land Trust. Um, so there is currently a, uh, the Mount Warner connector trail runs through the property and uh, we are proposing to do a quarter mile loop trail off of that property uh, about, sorry, let me pull up my notes here. Uh, about 700 feet of that trail is within 200 feet of a stream, um, which is why we're here tonight to see uh, how you, you feel about us there? working. You Sorry, I couldn't hear you there. there. Yep, so everyone can see it. Can you share your screen to um, show the board yes. the proposed trail? Okay, uh, I can do that. Let me just figure that out. Their screen. Okay. 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 Uh, let's see. Why am I? Oops. Hold on. My computer is freezing here, but. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Can everyone see that? Yes. Yeah. Right. So where is the proposed trail extension? Is that the, the magenta the or green? what? Green? The green, green? Uh, is the proposed trail. Um, and then the uh, magenta is the area of bench cutting. So this is the only area where we might disturb soil. The rest of it is mostly just uh, leaf raking and vegetation cutting. Nothing greater than four inch DBH uh, tree removal. Yellow is the existing trail. Uh, in addition to the new trail at the orange point here at the top of the knoll would be uh, a, a, a rustic bench, a, a sort of at like a, a viewpoint here. Um, and down here at the star would be a small kiosk that would have a, a property map to show people, you know, the trail network and where they could go from here. It would also help attract people because parking for this area is across the street at the Porter Phelps Museum. Um, so it, it would just give folks a visual of how where to go from the parking area to sort of enter the trail network. So the magenta area would be a connector for them, the shortcut? Correct, yes. So um, you could come up here and do the loop around to the viewpoint um, typically we don't find people want to like backtrack the whole way. So we're worried if we don't give them a shortcut back down, they're just going to start making trails through the woods here, um, which would lead to a lot of erosion. So we want to build a nice sustainable trail for folks here. Um, bench cutting, would you like a explanation of that or? Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. So basically it's taking, um, the slope and uh, cutting, you know, some of the soil to make a, a flat um, cross section of trail for people to walk on. 
Um, so it oh, all be done I... with hand tools. Um, and it's, we're not really, rem we're just moving soil about um, a foot or two. Here's the end. Anybody else want to see this? No, thank you. Okay. Okay. So, what uh, work is it, what work is within the jurisdiction of the Wetlands Protection Act? I mean, how close are you to the stream? The closest point? Uh oh, let's see. Uh, the closest point is probably right here. Is approximately twenty feet or something, but um, the two hundred foot buffer. Actually, I can pull it up. Let me see. So the uh, this is 200 feet here, the blue dash line. So this section of trail uh, would be inside. This actually already, it was pre-existing. So the new sections back here. So it would be these two pieces of the trail right here and here. Okay. Uh, as Anything well, important? also the kiosk would be inside the resource area. Aren't there enough walking trails in town? Yeah, so uh, I agree there are a lot of hiking trails. There's one here on the property, but you know, this uh, existing yellow trail just kind of shoots people straight through and off the property. It brings them up to Mount Warner. It's a very short experience um, on this property. This loop trail would give folks sort of a better and more diverse experience, kind of instead of just seeing the um, the stream buffer there, folks who get to get up and get a view. Um, from here, you can see some of the Porter Phelps land, some of the other um, Hadley agricultural fields, as well as a view of the, the range to the south. Um, and it just gives folks something different to do. Uh, you know, you can walk a loop and sort of have an experience in 15 minutes instead of actually having to, to leave the property and, and go on like a long, a long walk. So this is more of like a like a lunchtime experience than like a, an outing. Uh, what about other user groups that use this property? You've got one trail that cuts through there. I've been hunting that property all my life and walking up and down that hill forever. I was there a couple of times this year already at least. Didn't need a little walkway or didn't need any dirt move so it would be easier to walk up a hill. You got one trail there that everybody's going to be using and they should, they should stay on the trail and other user groups can do the other part. You guys, I went up to the end of Shimura Road a few months, a month ago, and it was embarrassing what was up there. No more deer, just nothing but hiking and biking trails, green trails, purple trails, pink trails, everywhere. Mm -hmm. We don't, we, how many hiking, how many miles of hiking trails are there in Hadley right now? I couldn't tell you. I know. There's a ton. And sure. keeping on doing this, all you're doing is destroying the property. There's, that's not the way that you, you Kestrel Land Trust should be. Every square inch of the property has to be a hiking trail. I, I, don't, I don't like that. Yeah. If they go to the end of Shemur Road, it's unbelievable. From there to, uh, to, oh, to the Can I just road. pause for one sec? Because... Um, Kestrel does not own or manage the land on Chamorro Road. That's town-owned land as well as Amherst College and Hampshire College. So I appreciate that there are issues happening there, but I'm not sure they're relevant to this property. It's, a, it's the same idea. It's the same principle. Once you start, The next thing you know, you're going to have a trail that cuts off this way. And then you have a trail that cuts that way. And then you're just going to... It's not good land stewardship. You have one trail that goes right there, right up to the, to the apple orchard. I think that's enough. Sure, I, I understand that point of view. Um, and we're, we, while we are trying to steward our land for many different user groups, hunters are certainly one of them, uh, hikers are others. And we feel like we would like to provide an alternate use experience for our, our walking and hiking groups that are out there. What they did at the end of Shimura Road eliminated a user group. And that's the hunter. I understand and that. I, I'm I, sorry I, to I hear that. that. I got people that live on the end of Shemura Road. They used to, I got pictures and videos of deer on the end of Shemura Road. Now there's none. They all Again, moved sir, down towards I BM. understand that, but oh, there was, I am not the land manager for Shemura Road. 
I don't want this to turn into Shamura Road. That's why I'm talking. Sure. And you're already doing it. Well, what he's basically saying, it's, it's not a con con issue. It's just a personal opinion that he's expressing as a board right. member because you're taking land and now scaring all the wildlife away by putting these trails every which way. And that's not, what he's saying is that's not proper land management when you're, the, 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 the deer is being pushed out because of all the trails. And there's turkeys up there too. Lots it's not, of, it's not just deer. It's not just deer. It's turkey. It's wild. It was wild. How about a wildlife? Uh, what do you call that? Impact yeah. study. Yeah, wildlife, wildlife impact study. Uh, okay. Um, Listen, I, I live a mile away from there. I've been up that hill all my life. Sure. Okay. There's so you'd like us to do a deer. wildlife you go impact people? study? Is that see something done? I mean, we wanted to use the land on uh, Mount Warner, and they told us that we had to do a wildlife impact study to see if the deer actually needed to be uh, taken out. Okay. Uh, can um, I ask? Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> uh, sure. So you'd like us to do a wildlife impact study to proceed with this project? That's my personal opinion. That's one board member's opinion. Right. We're a board of uh, nine of four. And I can ask other members to express which way they so choose to move. I'm just a person running the meeting as a chairman. I don't have the ultimate say. You know, a couple of years ago, we approved of Kestrel to, for a bog bridge to connect a trail to another trail. Now, this board is all about protecting wetland. We approved it, and I, I'm sad that I did because I thought we'd be working with Kestrel, not against them, as far as being a sportsman go and another user group. But I've seen what happened on Shamura Road and I don't want to see it happen on every mountain in Hadley. Okay, understood. Where, just out of curiosity now, where was the bog bridge? Somewhere in uh, Shattuck Road. Was that the one for the food bank farm? Okay. Might have been. Yeah. Yep, you, you yep, know, Shattuck one, Road's food bank. Trails yeah. aren't good enough anymore for Kestrel. You've got to connect one to the other, which makes sense, but through a swamp. Nobody else could do that. I mean, we're working with you guys, but geez, enough's enough. We have enough of hiking trails in Hadley. It's just inviting more and more people to, to, to destroy the land. And as a matter of fact, when that trail was first created, we and Edwin did, and I did. We says you got to put up a sign there because there's a gravel pit right there yeah. that everybody shoots in. And we said if you're going to put up this trail, put up a sign saying "caution shooting range, stay on trail." We never did it. Now you're putting a kiosk right next to the gravel pit. So basically, that's not right. You're looking for a jurisdictional. Uh, you're looking for an approval for a project, but we have a we have a fundamental problem. With approving this project because of what's going on elsewhere. It's, it's just a nonstop proliferation of trails. I'm not against this, but I'm, I'm just expressing what Steve is, I think Steve will agree with what I'm saying. I don't know how the other board members feel. There comes some point where, I don't know. I don't think that uh, the taxpayers of the town of Hadley want more uh, walking trails. But that's not our, our say. Mm -hmm. so the, only thing, the only way that we could uh, hold this project up as we close the hearing and we don't have a proper vote. Uh, I, I, I'm I not against this idea of a trail, but I hear what the other board members are saying as far as user groups. It's not a conservation commission issue, but it's, it's so many, I don't know how to handle this one. I want to say it. Right on top of that ridge where that green trail is, the turkeys roost up there all the time. Now you got people walking in it, they're going to have to relocate. That's okay. not right. You're going to push them somewhere else. You're going to put them somewhere else. Granted, you're going to go find them. That's okay. They're going to be right over there. But the bottom line is you're moving habitat. For You've got a nice trail going through there already. Big, wide, drive a pickup truck through it. You don't have to take every little piece of that property and make a trail and a kiosk and a sitting bench. It, 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 I mean, it's, it's just too much. Um, it's the mountains. 
doesn't have to be a, 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 a bike trail or a hiking trail. You can, if you want to, you can walk off the trail like hunters do and go walk around. You don't have to mark it all up and kiosk it and put up chairs. But that's my opinion. Okie doke. Well, thank you for your opinion. I just want to make sure everyone has a chance to speak if there's other thoughts. Anyways. Well, I, think, I mean, I, I kind of agree with Steve as far as as far as push, pushing the uh, pushing all the wildlife around. Yeah, it happened at the end of Shamora Road, big time. It's amazing. Yeah, I couldn't even believe it. Well, so um, I I have a question. I I very much am hearing and appreciating your opinions about this, but what I what I'm wondering is Kestrel owns this land and. I'm asking you if I can work inside of a, a wetlands uh, protection area. And does the Wetlands Protection Act, uh, does it consider impacts to wildlife such as deer and turkeys? Mm, I have a copy of the Wetlands Protection Act with me. I mean, I'm not I trying to like, push back super hard, I understand here, but I, I just kind of um, feel like I'm, I'm being, uh, well, we're, I don't know. Well, I think what the board what, what the board member is saying is that he doesn't think you, you can keep building more and more trails and even though you own the property. At some point there has to be some um, concern for other user groups. We can basically abstain and this thing moves nowhere tonight. Okay. Uh, we can also look over the options. Over the other options. So, I mean, uh, part of that trail is ours too. We the snowmobile club and Castro uses part of that trail and the little bridge behind Cole Morgan to get. We go one way, you guys go the other way, but part of it's multi-use. Basically, if we were not to support this, they would have to take it to the DEP to get approval and got our hands in this. No. Okay. But that that's a position yeah. the board wants to take. Yeah. It's up to the board. Yeah. I'm just throwing an option out there. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the options, um, because you did submit a permit application to the board, um, I just want to go over all of the different options we don't always um, use, because it's not like a traditional construction project. Um, so it is, there is work within an area subject to protection under the Act. In terms of positive determination, most of those require a notice of intent um, or it's subject to review by the wetlands bylaw, um, which if some of the work is within 20 feet of the stream, then it would be within the 35 foot buffer zone under the Hadley bylaw. Where is that there? Where it's close to the, 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 the magenta right there? The, the bottom yeah, right magenta the, line is basically about 20 feet away. That's the only part that really is, yeah, but gets, there's already a trail there. There's already a trail there. So it's no, it, it's not even versus, I, I think, you make it. I can see where it's, you know it's. I don't even see where there's a wetland issue there. To be honest with you, no, know, we're, trail. We're, we're just. The reason you know, I came to y'all is because my understanding was if we do anything within 200 feet of a stream, we should ask you before we do anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So if yeah. we're sticking by the permit and just taking a minute to look at. The permit application, the options on the permit application would be to issue either a positive or a negative determination. A positive would be that um, no work may proceed until there's a notice of intent, basically. Um, that's what we would do for, you know, like we did for the River Drive yeah. where they didn't. I think um, this is going to be a negative. Yeah. And then a negative determination would be that there might be work subject, um, but it does not alter that area um, or that it is not an, an area subject to the act or it's in the buffer zone, which um, in this case, I think it's technically riverfront area, but it's also in the buffer zone. But it's, it's very small. Uh, it's a very, small, very small area that is actually within the jurisdictional it's area. The, the rest of the property, Kestrel owns, Kestrel manages. We're only concerned about approving what's within the jurisdictional resource area. That's the limit of our ability um, here. I think I would look to make a motion to close the hearing and then we get a discussion. What about wildlife and we have, we have, we have discussions. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close the hearing. Okay. I have a motion to close the hearing. Yeah, make a motion to close the hearing. Make, make a motion second by oh, second. Edwin seconded. 
All those in favor of, of any, you know, closing the hearing? Aye. Okay, we've got further discussion after that. Right. Okay. Aye. 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 Ray. Aye. Okay. So we close the hearing. Are you going to vote against the hearing? Closing the hearing? Yeah. Okay. Because now so three of us are not. We can abstain. I know. That's right. So three, close it. Steve, abstain. Right. So we've closed the hearing. We have an option of a negative determination. So the negative determination options would be that the area is not in an area subject to protection, which technically it is, um, or that it is within an area subject, but will not remove, fill, dredge, or alter that area. Therefore, it does not require notice of intent. I'm going to say it's a negative two because the amount of work they're doing is... Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a negative two. In terms of wetland impact. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing, it's wetland impacts. There's nothing in the permits or the permit application that specifies beyond that. The only other thing is our 35 foot do not disturb. I mean, it's within a 35 foot Abbey Town bylaw that should be checked off as well. Okay, so that would be um, on, the, on the next page, I believe. Well, I'm just spot. double checking. We normally just see. Uh, okay, so the area is subject uh, to protection, um, right, um, meets the requirements. Uh, I don't know if that's not it. That's exempt. Uh, okay, the area and or work described is not subject to review and approval. Right. So that would be is not yeah. subject to review. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, we, we have a negative two determination. So uh, the negative two would be that, uh, yeah, the work described in the request is within an area subject to protection under the Act regarding wetlands, but will not remove, fill, dredge, or alter that area. Therefore, okay. said work does not require filing of work. So anything, um, this is a good question, is that uh, any soil from the bench cutting, that would still stay on site. That's not, nothing's being removed from the property. So That's correct. It's just regrade. Yeah, it's, it's shifting Take, take it from triangle, putting it over here, make a flat spot. Yeah. So I'm gonna look for a motion to uh, negative two determination. A motion from anybody? Yeah, I'll move it. Edwin moves it. Ray of second it. I don't think we need any further discussion. Um, I think all those in favor, then I'm going to say aye. 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 Steve's going to say abstain. Yep. Okay. So three to one. Mm -hmm. we're, we're giving you your permit, but we're also kind of putting you on notice of how we feel in the future about additional trails. Understood. And, and I'll will take that <clears throat> for sure uh, into consideration and uh, I'm gonna bring this back to uh, my colleagues and supervisor is it, at Kestrel. A lot of the info I heard tonight was kind of um, very understandable, but new news to me. So thank you all, especially Steve for sharing your thoughts with me. And I happen to agree with him quite a bit of that. I think I the other board members are sort of in agreement from hearing yes, the sir. reaction. So you got four board members. You're kind of lucky to get the vote tonight. We're going according to what we have jurisdiction over, but we're also we're also concerned about all the user groups. Um, right. It has to come some point where the town can't be just a complete network of trails and then pushing the wildlife out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please bring that back to your board. I will do that. Okay. 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 I'll get a copy of this uh, scanned to you tomorrow. And uh, where would you like me to mail the physical copies to? Uh, there's a PO box. I can send it to you. Okay. All right. And Let's get this signed up. <laughs> well, thanks for your time. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we could have. Uh... And. Did other folks, yeah. Heather, look like, do you have a question for me or? Yeah, my question is about uh, the traffic, um, your little map. You're saying people are coming from the house off of 47, plus the people you have parking all over Mount Warner, not in the parking lot. You're creating more traffic, and that's a whole nother problem. And these people are out in cars. That road on Mount Warner is not very large. Now you're going to have people crossing 47 and or parking on that side of 47 with their cars. It's a little frustrating as a town resident. 
that's another frustrating part. So you're adding more traffic. Sure, I understand. I'm sorry to hear that. To be clear, uh, the only parking for this is already existing. It's at the Porter Phelps Huntington Museum. Um, so the parking on Mount Warner Road is uh, for the Mount Warner Reservation that's owned and managed by the Trustees of Reservation, um, which is a different organization. So I can't really speak to their... So you have people situation. crossing 47 on foot. Yes, that is true, which is not ideal, but um, we chose to, the, the field right there on River Drive is uh, actively being hayed, and we decided it was uh, better to leave that in active production than to turn it into a parking area there, so that was- We also have people currently parking on 47 on that side, which puts a danger too. people getting in right. on vehicles on the main route. That is very much not our intention. There shouldn't be anyone parking there. We'll, we can put better signage there that directs people into the Porter Phelps parking area, but it is not our intention to have anyone parking along the side of the road there. And like you said, you're possibly gonna make that a parking area. That's- No, we are not. Taking we are out not. of, all right, well, that's conservation and farmland if you did. No, we are choosing not to put a parking area there to preserve the farmland. But then that requires people to cross the road. So I understand. It's a trade off. Anything else? Anybody else wish to comment? Okay. Hearing that, I'm going to move on to the next request for determination of applicability DPW Old Bay Road erosion control. The Town of Halley Department of Public Works seeks to reinforce an area along the edge of Old Bay Road using riprap and fabric to vent for the erosion. Site visit was conducted in 1227. Mark Stinson of DEP, myself, and Shiloh. And uh, I will say where the where the, the slough of the bank is, Shiloh, you know, I, I told Mark that swale was created when they did the road widening and the bridge work for yeah. comp storage. Yeah. And there's some slight erosion from Route Bay Road into that swale. And Mark Stinson and I, we basically agree, putting some riprap and just to, to shore it up from further erosion, the amount of volume in the floodplain would diminish, uh, be very small volume. But Scott, tell us how you want to fix that. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks uh, everyone for having me. Uh, just want to put some fabric there, Gary, uh, stabilization fabric and line it with riprap. Uh, there'll be very little impact there. I just want to shore it up to keep it from uh, slipping any more impacting uh, Old Bay Road. What are you thinking of? Something like five, eight inch uh, rip rock, rip rock? Y yeah, yeah, just uh, yeah, five, eight inch, uh, I forget the exact five, term, uh, screen rip wrap, no, no uh, big surge stone or nothing, just nice, nice uh, rip wrap stone, something we can really not too small. Uh, pack in there. Yeah, not too small, not like two inch stone, but I think it's four to six inch Gary at the quarry. Yep. You buy it. That's what that's what I was yeah. thinking of. Yeah. Basically compacting into the bank at a, at a decent slope. It's not a it's not a steep bank to begin with, probably about four or five feet high at most. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it's not very bad. It uh it was just brought to our attention and it as you saw, we are losing a little bit of uh uh, land there against the road due to erosion. It, there's uh, no drainage here. It's just country drainage. The water just naturally goes off the road there and it's starting to uh, erode it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, the erosion is about five feet, four feet from the actual road edge. Yeah. It's minor yeah. after yeah. I, I realizing after uh, looking at it. So yeah. uh, we have a positive yeah. determination that we're going to put on that one with the. With, Let's see what we got here. Um, it's not a wetland area. It's floodplain where it is. Um, under your floodplain. This is right next to the. Um, Old gas I would say, I'm going to say it's a negative two. The work described in the request is within an area subject to protection of the act, but will not remove fill, dredge, or alter that area. Therefore, said work does not require the following of a notice of intent. I'm always saying that because 
He's only replacing what it's lost. The amount of fill, even though right. it is still, yeah, mm -hmm. is a very small, like Mark Simpson said, and, and it's the word Paulette, I can't pronounce Diminicus? Diminuous. Diminuous? I got a little Diminimus? Diminimus. Diminimus. The amount of rock is diminimus. <laughs> uh, we're probably talking a, a, a loader full. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. I'm just going to say a negative two. Okay. Because it is work. Uh, yeah. Look for a motion for that. So move. That removes. Second. 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 Steve, look for a discussion. All those in favor? Okay. All right. All four? Yep. Okay. All four yes. unanimous. You all set, Scott. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Okay. Next on the agenda, me. You. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna say reverse the order from oldest to newest. Reverse the order from 1977 on the bottom. Yeah. So um, do that one first. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, basically, basically <laughs> I, I can't run the meeting. No. But um, I'll give a quick synopsis. It's yeah. not uncommon that many people never ask for COCs, and I'm guilty of it. Yep. And if you have order conditions, they're supposed to be recorded when you're ready to get compliance. And which in many cases they're not done. But if they are, as you just saw with previous applicant yeah um margie southworth mm -hmm. there were already previously two open order conditions that were found at the registered deeds so they have to be closed with a certificate of compliance <laughs> so what i'm asking the board is basically paperwork clerical going back i can explain each project what they were did you do them no, I did not do them. Okay, so how do you them, huh? how do you expect us to do an order? I'm the, I'm the applicant. Okay. Yeah. Just like Marjorie Southworth was the applicant for Martin Rule. Hmm? Martin Rule wasn't asking for a certificate of compliance. Marjorie asked for the certificate of compliance to close out the order conditions, saying the work was never done. The first one was done by my dad. He's dead. Right. Yeah. I I'm I'm now the owner of record of the property. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Right. So none of this stuff was done of all the of all the because you a certificate of compliance indicates that you completed everything. Yes, they're all completed projects. They you completed the project. Did you do the work? Yes. That that the uh, town town presented to you. Yes, I did. In that 1977. Was, that was 45 years ago. Yeah, I know that. I know that. <laughs> It was it was a construction of one of the metal buildings. Yep, down by my house. So the bolt storage shed on the okay. Request for certificate of compliance, one Russell Street, one seventy dash fourteen. Gary Callis here seeks a certificate of compliance for the construction of a bolt storage shed on the Connecticut River in nineteen seventy seven. I'm going to make sure that that gets into the minutes. Nineteen seventy seven. So I don't have a problem if you did everything that was requested of you. I don't have a problem doing it. So you just have to ask the board. How do we know that though? I mean, it's 45. I know, but. I have the order of conditions. <laughs> if you want to look at it. I, I have the oh, order as long as you got them. I have them. I have every order of conditions uh, for this project. Now, basically when, when, when you do so a project, the, you have to get a uh, oh, certificate of occupancy. Right. The okay. building inspector will not give you a certificate of occupancy unless you've satisfied the order and conditions. Right. And all my prize has a certificate of occupancy. I'm not going to say nothing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's 170 days. Yeah, this is the original this um, order of conditions if you want to read through, right. or I can no. read through it. No, no, I don't want to get too, I just want to make sure we're. We can't get in trouble for doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> you have the permits. You know what I mean? That's it. On file. Right. It's basically, it's closing out the file. Yes. That's I, all, that's it, all it's, it's a paperwork thing. It's I a did. paperwork thing. Yep. And, and all of the payments and everything have been processed. Okay. okay. So, um, all good. so, all these are all that? Every yeah. one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. You did a lot of work there. <laughs> well, it's over 45 years. I know that. I know that. But okay, so what do we okay? So do we close the hearing for the certificate of client of compliance or is it really a hearing to begin with? Or no. 
Uh-huh. Is it really considered a hearing? Well, I, I mean, it's on the agenda. Yeah, okay, so just, okay, you have to close here. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, I, I'll take a motion to close the hearing for the certificate of compliance for one Russell Street. Okay, make a motion to close the hearing. Okay, second. Okay, it was a uh, motion by Steve, seconded by Ray. Mm-hmm. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, unanimous vote. Okay. Um, anybody else have any comments about the closing the the certificate of compliance? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're unanimous. We got one done. We got one done. Yes. Signature page for that. Okay. Uh, then the next one will be a request for a certificate of compliance on one Russell Street, uh, number 170-22. Gary Pellis here seeks a certificate of compliance for the construction of a commercial building and associated septic system. In 1985, he did this work. You can tell by the number 170, 14, and 20. These were some of the earliest ones ever. We're mm-hmm. up to 291. Yeah. yeah. Right now, we have 291 NOIs <laughs> filed with DEP. Yeah. Um, that was a building at Route 9 when we constructed that. The shop? Yeah. In 85? We started in 85, yes. Did you do the work? Yes, sir. Okay. Everything was done the plan. I'll go uh, wait a minute. Uh, I'll in, uh, entertain a motion to close the hearing. So um, Motion by Steve. Second. Seconded by Ray. Um, all those in favor of closing the hearing signify by saying aye. 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 That's unanimous. We close the hearing. Did I do that right? Yes. Okay. Now we vote on the certificate of compliance, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, does anyone else have any comments? Hearing none, we'll seek a motion to close the certificate of compliance. No, issue of certificate. Issue of certificate of compliance, yes. So moved. Okay. Sorry. Motion by Ray, seconded by Steve. Wait a minute. I can't do two things at once. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, and must, we're going to issue a re- uh, certificate of compliance to this project. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now we go to 1996. Holy shit. Oh, excuse my English. <laughs> Request for oh, no. a certificate of compliance, 1 Russell Street, 170 97. Gary Palliser seeks a certificate of compliance for the construction of a new building and driveway in 1996. Um, that would be my house. Yeah. We've been down there, we visited it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so you built it. Yeah, you did all the work. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. We uh, closed the hearing for the certificate of compliance. You need a motion. Huh? You need a motion. Make a motion to close the hearing. Okay, a motion so by uh, Ray, seconded by Steve. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, all those opposed, your motion carries. Okay, now we're going to um, vote on uh, issuing a certificate of compliance for the project. Mm-hmm. Everyone signified by, um, okay, wait a minute, we need a motion. So moved. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Shane. <laughs> You want to do it? No, absolutely not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All those in favor of issuing a certificate of compliance um, for 170-97 can uh, to by third. saying aye. 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 Bye. Okay. Mm-hmm. Next one will be a request for certificate of compliance on 1 Russell Street, 170-102. Gary Pellis here seeks a certificate of compliance for the construction of a building addition in 1997. We're getting closer. Yeah. That was a more. small addition put on the back of the existing <laughs> building. Of the you did all the work. You did all the work. Oh, done yeah. By my brother. Yeah. Okay. 
Hey man, I'm getting writer's cramp. Yeah. I'm just, I, I wasn't born until the second to last term. <laughs> was too- All right, let's figure this one out. <laughs> Second for the last permit. Oh, I didn't write the year for that. You one. didn't write the year. Oh, maybe I missed it. Okay. <laughs> it's 12 years ago, roughly. Yes. 2010. I, I was born b- before 2010. <laughs> you were born this century. No, I was 1908. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, so we need a motion to close the hearing for a certificate of compliance for Gary Bell is here. Which one are we on? 102? 102. I make a motion to close the hearing on 170-102. Second. Okay, motion by Ray, seconded by uh, Steve. All those in favor, signify right. by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, to close the hearing, we're going to issue a certificate of compliance. All those in favor of issuing a, make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance. Yep. Second. Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. You did everything, right? We're yes, trusting that you did everything. Yes, sir. Request for a certificate of compliance, 1 Russell Street, 170-215. Gary Pelletier seeks a certificate of compliance for the construction of a new boathouse for the UMass Women's Crew Team. Um, I'm getting there. <laughs> Signatures get really crappy this time of night. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting kind of messy in my last couple too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I'll um, I'll entertain a motion to to close the close the hearing for a certificate of compliance. Second. No, I, I make a motion oh, to close the hearing. Yeah, motion by Ray, seconded by Steve for one seventy two fifteen. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now we're going to uh, issue a certificate of compliance. Did we do that? No, we need a motion. Okay, I need, we need a motion oh, to if, issue a, uh, I make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 170-215. Second. Okay, I'll do um, Thank you. Uh, okay, one minute. All those in favor? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And the, the last two are connected because this summer, for over 10 years, I had a mound of dirt. Oh, yeah. Okay. That was part of the UMass construction. That's why this one wasn't asked for earlier. The same thing with Smith. That, since that was all cleaned up this summer, mm-hmm. I couldn't come back for a single city. Right until that pile was gone, with everything was restored to the original grade. Okay, it, it, it okay, which was after the vault, but that's I'm just explaining mm-hmm. right. The, right. the connection. Okay, um, request for a certificate of compliance on Russell Street, um, 170 244. Gary Fellows here re- seeks a certificate of compliance for a new boat, boathouse and parking lot. Um, I will, um, I'll entertain a motion to recommend. Uh, close. This is the last one. Two, two, four, four. I make a motion to uh, two, two four four. Yeah. Close the uh, hearing on one seventy dash two one five. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, one seventy dash two four four four. Good. Thank you. My mistake, sir. <laughs> Thank you. We're a second. Is there a second? Yeah. Okay, Second. all those in um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. We're closing the hearing. We make a motion to uh, issue a certificate of compliance for 170-244. Okay, we have a motion to issue a certificate of compliance. And we have a set uh, Ray made the motion, Stephen seconded it. All those in favor of issuing the certificate signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, it's unanimous. All those opposed? 
Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to come back over and sit with you folks. Thank you. We got a big audience tonight. You can see on the room, all paperwork here. Yeah. So we can all live. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. People will watch. Don't worry. Yeah. We have a YouTube channel. Yeah. You're YouTube famous. Really? I never like to watch me at all. I just. I, I, I actually love that it's recorded to two minutes. It, it does make a lot of As a lot of people say, yeah. Uh, Okay, uh, other business, budget request submitted. All right, so fiscal year 24 will start in July of this year, but budget requests are due, well, I submitted it already, um, but as I've told all of you that um, this is the last meeting that I can guarantee my presence at because I am starting my new job next Tuesday. Um, I will still be helping out in a very part-time capacity. I'll be accessible by phone and email, and I'll try to make it to meetings when I can to help out with paperwork. Um, so what I uh, discussed with the town administrator and treasurer is um, to make some changes to the budget in terms of salary, and but it's kind of a moot point <laughs> because I'm leaving, but uh, we're having a conversation about uh, job posting to find a but, more, we need, we, more robust but, but, but we need to submit a budget which you yes. prepare. So I have submitted it already. We'll I go with that, and then if something changes after that, we'll deal with so it. So just letting we'll you know, I do have a copy of what I submitted. Um, it hasn't been approved or denied. It's just been reviewed. I'm, I'm, um, I'm fine with it. Yeah. So that's all good. Okay. Um, bills? Uh, okay. So NACC dues. Um, have increased a little bit. So there's going to be $305 for the year, which I did reflect that change in the budget request. Uh, we don't have any like formal invoice to sign yet. Uh, just letting you know that that should be. In the other words, MS. Uh, MS MCP. Um, they gave me this form to give them like a check or cash, but I don't have ability is to this write a, a check. Is this a renewal? Yes. Basically, I, I'm going to email them and make sure we get the same care because MSMCP they do a lot of those like so, webinars that I send okay. to you guys. I would right. I would entertain a motion for Shaw to act accordingly on the MACC dues and MSMCP dues mm -hmm. to pay those, yeah. however way it has to be done. I move. I second the motion and okay, you, I need a motion. I need a motion. Okay, okay. Edwin's going to make the motion. I'll make the motion. Second. Second, second by Ray. Any further discussion? All those in favor, hearing none. Right. Uh, unanimous. So we give you permission to okay. address yeah, those dues. Leaving. Updates. Taylor's leaving. We had that. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> what do we do now? Well? So, Who's gonna take over? Well, that's what I'm uh, hoping to help the town find somebody to work. You know, like a either what I've been doing or, or more uh, to help you guys I know Carol Brennan's already working, working on it. Yep. And, and yeah. Is the regional thing working? Like we work with other towns? And well, Montague and Leverett are looking for, according to Mark Simpson. Uh, Leverett and Belchertown well, okay. and okay. Um, Wendell. So okay, Belchertown is looking for someone full-time um, with very robust salary and benefits. But Bel uh, Leverett is looking for part-time and Wendell is looking for part-time. So he, I've advised the town administrator to contact those other towns to see if they can cooperate and find kind of one person to work for all of them. Maybe I we all, all okay, share someone. Yeah. Yeah. So Carol, Carolyn's yeah. working on that. In the yeah. meantime, we're going to see how long we can keep Shyla limping along and, and <laughs> see what we can get done. Yeah. Right, and uh, I'll take this uh, time now to say thank you very much for doing the job that you have been doing. You I did will, a very good job. Thank you. Thoroughly <laughs> endorse that with a Absolutely. Yep. And it helps us out tremendously. To be thrown in the deep end like that. It's been, it's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate your support through all of this. I know. My you dog's going to miss you. <laughs> What's that? My dog's going to miss you. I'm, so, I'm, not, I'm not dying. I'm not moving. Well, I'm, gonna be, I'm living in the valley, you know? <laughs> I'm, so, so, I'm, visit, I'm buying a car soon, so I'll be able to okay. swing by. Can I have wheels? Get one yet? Not yet. Okay. Soon. So <laughs> the next up, we have October 11th, November 22nd, December 13th, meeting minutes. I move we accept the minutes as presented. All three of them? Yes. I uh, look for a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So we get that paper out of the way. Upcoming, uh, excuse me, upcoming learning opportunities. I'm sure there are some, but I've been busy getting the office organized for you guys. So. You've got to see the office, man. It's incredible. Yes. It's I've getting never, better. It's, it's <laughs> been, everything is 
Fantastic. And I will be wow. leaving sticky notes with instructions. Um, and like I said, you can call me if you don't know where things are. I'm trying to get rid of as much stuff as I can to cancel out the noise. So if you are looking for a file, it exists and you don't have to dig through a bunch of junk. It's not um, by name or street. It's all by file numbers, like NLIs. Yep. So that's all chronological uh, through time. Uh, um, request for determination. I'm still working through getting rid of anything that's more than a decade old. We are not legally required to keep anything for more than three years, but I think it's good to have a more robust history. So I'm keeping a decade. Um, I'm working on filtering out the old ones. Like you don't need ones from like 1975, which we have a lot of. <laughs> for it's at some point we we keep all the NOIs going back to basically number one, just about. Yes, we have okay. every single. But NOI. I'm sure at some point we can check with DEP and yeah, find out which one. Because I know they they only they have, only keep them so long too yeah. in Springfield. Right. Right. Then they're on the. I went up went down there and I had to find one in a filing cabinet in the hallway because I was investigating a, a filing in South Hadley for referral purposes. This is over 20 years ago. But he said, yeah, it's out there in the cabinet in the hallway. You have to look for it. Because <laughs> um, so, once everything's been done, especially you get a COC, there's no reason to hang on to it sometimes. There's right. a, a document on the bulletin board in the office called the Municipal Retentions Record Policy or the Municipal Record Retention Policy. And I have a printout of the CONCOM specific documents right. that and the timeline we're required to keep. So engineering plans, anything stamped by an engineer is perpetuity, permanent. So I have several files that are just engineering plans and I'll label those as plans Thank that we you. cannot throw away. Okay. Um, and they should, most of them have, I mean, like the plans have the address and everything. Most of them are in a folder that says what they're about. And most of those plans but, are probably with NOIs. Correct? Most of them are with NOIs. Um, I do have a floor to ceiling um, rack full of like full size engineering plans but anything that's not like rolled up is in a file um, okay. and i have banker boxes that are going to be labeled with the contents so it should be easier from most of the time what we need to reference people will come in and say hey like is there any have there been any permits on this property before um i want to do something here like uh down by like home depot for example or the you know hotels things like that when they want to do an addition they want to refer to their previous ones yeah, and, um, and yeah. technically they if they were recorded, they would find it out when they do a, a land search. Yeah, so right. If it never was recorded, it's almost like it doesn't exist. It doesn't so order exist. of conditions are required to be I, recorded. I don't know how many of my six actually were ever recorded, mm -hmm. but while we were doing the, the newest ones, which I know were recorded, I figured I went back and I just get them all and I'll have them. In the well, you, got a, you got all the records at home. Right. Well, and that's the thing is that the, the applicant, it's their responsibility to keep their documents yes. for however long. We sure. don't have to hold it forever um, unless it's certain things like the engineering plans. But um, I'm going to be in the office all day tomorrow. So if anyone that's does want to stop by and get a tour of <laughs> where I kept things, let me know. Yep. Thank you. I'll organize that all. Um, so, um, then, okay. Anything see. else? I'm going to look for an adjournment if there's something else being discussed. I move we adjourn. Second. Second.